Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Vernon here with Israeli News Live, and we have a very special guest. I was telling you we was going to have a special guest tonight, and I always like to keep my guests top secret just in case everybody decides to, uh, I don't know, whatever they decide to do. Anyway, Pastor Anthony from Daily Excellence. Pastor Anthony, it is a pleasure to have you on. I know we, I heard so many wonderful things about the broadcast we did together and I wanted you to come here on Israeli News Live so people could meet you, learn more about the platform that you're doing there. I know you host, a, uh, besides doing your own broadcast, your own news footage and things like that, you also uh, are given the permission to put uh, Mike from around the world, uh, Council of Time, their information up on your broadcast, which is really nice, because uh, that's actually where I watch everything at from Mike, practically. So thank you welcome and share with people more about uh, your platform and what you guys are doing. Okay. Well, for starters, thank you very much uh, for uh, uh, inviting me and allowing me to be on uh, your platform uh, with Israeli News Live. Uh, I'm humbled. Uh, I've been watching your stuff for years, and so uh, it's pretty exciting to be able to uh, work alongside you and, and be able to do a, uh, a video with you. And uh, yeah, you know, uh, Daily Excellence, we started, uh, you know, back in... Uh, 2000 year 2000 right before uh, all the fun stuff hit and uh you know i felt god was telling me to make a footprint uh, uh on the internet you know doing videos and things like that and so uh you know i started doing those and then uh, i kind of felt like you know i had been following mike for quite a while uh through paul bagley and then also through some other folks uh that were on that were doing it on youtube but then they quit doing it it was like a two-year gap and so I felt like I felt the need in my spirit like this needs to continue on. So I, I reached out to COT, uh, talked to some of the admins over there. They gave me permission to uh, go ahead and run with it. So I get audio files over there from uh, their website. We post them up over here uh, on Daily Excellence. We've been doing that for a little over two years now. Uh, and then, of course, we have our own content that we put out over here at, at Daily Excellence, pretty much uh, right along the lines of what you you do and what Paul Bagley does and guys like Earth Changes uh, channel and things like that. And so um, the idea really uh, for for uh, Daily Excellence is just uh, informing everybody, teaching everybody, bringing everybody to the cause of Jesus Christ, sharing the gospel and helping everybody to pursue the things of Jesus Christ daily and living a life of daily excellence. And so uh, that's pretty much what we do. Uh, the idea is just to be a, re a resource spot for everybody uh, to come to fellowship, bringing uh, people and places together. And uh, that's what we do. And so, yeah, you can reach us on YouTube. Uh, we have our, uh, our main channel, Daily Excellence. Uh, we're also on Odyssey. Um, we're over on Rumble as well. We're doing really good over on Rumble. Uh, then we have, uh, we're on Telegram. Uh, you can follow our Daily Excellence News channel, uh, our prayer room, which is open 24-7. A matter of fact, some of the uh, folks over at COT help us uh, run that prayer room. They're over there praying for a lot of our requests that come in and things like that. And so it's a good place to get involved in if you don't have anyone that uh, uh, can pray with you. Uh, we got a spot over there for you guys. Uh, and you can put in those requests and people like literally right away start praying. Uh, it's really awesome how that's been working out. And so uh, we have that. We also are on Patreon. Uh, everything that we put on Patreon is uh, free for everyone to look at. Uh, you know, we just ask that, hey, whatever God lays on your heart, whatever you want to donate to bless the channel, you can do that. Uh, but it's free. So and we also put the COT stuff over there on Patreon and that that's free to look at as well. So uh, a lot of different places to find us, you know, we, we got to play the shuffleboard game just like everybody else with uh, what happens on. Uh, well, I don't, I'm not going to say the channel just in case you put us on there, but you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> so yes, absolutely. Well, <clears throat> you know, it's nice to know, especially, and what we'll do is we'll put all the links in the description below for you guys uh, and, and, and Patreon, the thing I love about Patreon is that it gives people uh, the ability to support the work you do, mm -hmm. and it doesn't break the bank, uh, right. you know, because I, I've always saw myself, and, and I don't normally ever go much into donating and stuff like that. I'm just not a big person for pushing those things, but I will say it just for the sake of saying it, though. You've got some people that would be embarrassed to send a dollar to a, to a ministry because they would feel like, oh, gosh, you know, I, I just can't, I don't want to do that. It feels awkward to them. 
but yet right. you could be on Patreon and you could make that pledge for a dollar a month and it doesn't break the bank, you know, and it's not difficult to, to, to commit to that. And, and even if it is only a dollar or if it's five or whatever the mm -hmm. case may, however God lays on a person's heart, but still every bit adds up and helping oh, yeah. to support Absolutely. the broadcast. So, uh, so that, that's one thing I do appreciate about that particular platform. Um, all right, brother Anthony, let's, let's get right into this here. Um, what I really enjoyed when, when you had me on your broadcast there was that <clears throat> anytime I'm, I, I can interact with someone, I always do better at myself, you know, because if right. I just try to do a script and go with it, I, I'm like, I forget half the things I really wanted to say. And, uh, but then again, too, when I like to, when I bring someone on, I want people's perspective that are not my own uh that or even if, if we share the same view or if you have a different view it gives our listeners the opportunity to hear somebody else's perspective on the matters from a different point of view and as a minister i know that we'll look at a lot of these things tonight too from a biblical standpoint yeah prophetic standpoint that you see things on and uh and and we will touch on we're going to kind of we're going to We'll try, guys. We're going to try to keep us. We'll try to stay within an hour's time frame, roughly. But uh, but we're going to talk about uh, the war going on in Europe. We're going to talk about uh, this incoming. Uh, I, I prefer to say binary system. Maybe not mm -hmm. exactly what it is. I know Mike kind of steers away from that as well. As far as what it is, I understand why. I know a lot of the intel briefings he's in. I'm in as well. So we pretty much have. He, of course, he's got much greater knowledge, much better understanding than I do. It's just I know that we normally know similar, to almost exact same things anyway. Right. Um, but uh, but let's let's start off then right off <clears throat> right off from the beginning here with the situation in Ukraine. We know that uh, just the other day, uh, the Interior Ministry, the the head of the Interior Ministry. Uh, all the the not the entire interior ministry, but all the main people that were in that, uh, Pastor Anthony, that plane was shot down. Uh, I knew from right from the top where I get where I work at there that this was an inside job. It was done because of infighting going on in the country. Uh, mm -hmm. I actually spoke with a friend of mine over in eastern Ukraine. Uh, this morning we were we were chatting about the situation and he had actually posted from a general on the ground that was a former Ukrainian general that had said the exact almost the exact same thing that I'd already posted publicly about that. Mm -hmm. um, now, that's just kind of giving an idea of what's going on, on the ground. But I, just take liberty, Pastor Anthony, and, and talk to us about what you see happening in Ukraine doesn't have to specifically be on that subject there uh things that you see that are going on what direction you see it going in and where do you see this is playing out all right all right okay this is gonna be fun I hope you guys are ready all <laughs> right so i'm gonna start i'm gonna start from the very beginning all right when this thing broke out because i remember uh you know i remember back when like mike was talking about hey this is gonna happen you know russia russians are gonna come in they're gonna cross the border they're gonna go in and we're gonna have some issues in ukraine and uh, I remember following, uh, following along, uh, you know, following along with that. And then uh, I remember the morning that it happened. Uh, you know, I was watching everything live. I saw the power go out in uh, Kiev and and those areas. All the pre stuff that happened before they really started launching things. The thing that that uh, really troubled me, uh, and it, and it happened very quickly, uh, was that all of a sudden, I'm seeing Ukrainian flags fly everywhere. I'm seeing people change their profile pictures to Ukrainian flag. I mean, we got flags flying here in Michigan. We had, for there for a little while, we had more Ukrainian flags flying than we did American flags. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, and you know, I I've learned something over the last few years with things that have transpired that when the population gets on board with something, when somebody says something and the entire population literally overnight in less than 24 hours gets on board with something, something's not right. OK, uh, there's a reason why that's happened. And who starts off on the who starts it? You know, uh, I don't know. I just know wake up one morning. Next thing I know, I'm, apparently I'm supposed to I'm supposed to like the Ukrainians and I have no idea why. 
I'm supposed to fly these flags and I have no idea why. Now, there may be people watching tonight from Ukraine. I'm not making fun of you. I'm not saying that you're a bad person. I'm talking about right. the political side of it. Okay. And there's plenty of good Ukrainian Christians. There's plenty of good Russian Christians. Nothing wrong with people. They're just victims of the situation. Um, but, you know, I, I think there's something wrong with that. Uh, you know, why are we being pushed to do that? And so I personally, and, I, and I've said it on my channel, I never got on board with uh, pro-Ukraine and I never got on board with pro-Russia. Uh, I have friends that have YouTube channels, very successful YouTube channels, you know, uh, you know, way over, you know, over 50,000 people on there. And one is pro-Ukrainian and one is pro-Russian and behind the scenes, those two don't get along. Uh, and so it's, it's fun, you know, to kind of, you know, see that. And I'm like, okay, but in, I'm here, I'm like, I'm not pro anybody, uh, because something's not right here. There, there, there's, there's a fix that's happening here. And I think I would like to say that people are figuring this out, but I'm not hundred percent sure. I know guys like me and you, we've pretty well figured it out. You know, uh, I know you're privy to, to, to information behind the scenes. Uh, me on the other hand, I'm just like, I got a spiritual check. Like, you know, the Holy Spirit's like, right. Hey, something's off here. You, you don't, don't, don't fall into that trap. Okay. Uh, and I think that's what it is. And I, we've, as a country have fallen into that trap, uh, you know, before, we were, you know, just before we got on here, we were talking about all this resources and money that we're sending over there. I think we're sending another, what, $2.5 billion to the Ukraine today. Uh, you know, um, Biden's wanting to send uh, more tanks over there. Uh, Germany is wanting to send some tanks over there. Of course, they won't do it unless we bring something else to the table because Germany's like, I'm not going to fall by myself. You're coming with me type of thing. Uh, we're seeing, uh, you know, missile systems being brought over there now. And we're depleting our resources over here, which I don't think is by accident, in my personal opinion. There's a reason why we're sending our stockpiles and we're not, re we're not restocking our stuff. There's yeah. a reason for that, which that can be a whole nother conversation, um, you know, uh, but there's something, something's not right about that. And, you know, where do I think this go? You know, you asked, you asked, where do I think it's going to go? Um, it's going to be, uh, I think it's going to really lead into uh, a flashpoint for this World War III scenario. You know? Now, some argue that we're already in it, uh, you know, because of all the cyber attacks and things like that that have taken place. Uh, and maybe we, maybe so we are, maybe we're not. You probably would know more about that than I would. Um but I think that it's going to lead into this flashpoint where we're going to jump into uh, Ezekiel's prophecy. Uh, we're going to jump into Jeremiah's prophecy. We know we're going to start getting into these areas where we're going to start entertaining nuclear exchange. Now, when I say nuclear exchange, I don't mean like, uh, you know, Russia is going to start, you know, shooting off all the, everything they got. And we're going to start shooting off everything we got. No, that's not going to happen. Uh, biblically, that won't happen because we'll destroy ourselves and prophecy can't be fulfilled. OK, that's not going to happen. Uh, however, and this is my personal belief, I don't have any you know, background to say that this is it. This is just what I personally feel in, in my in my spirit uh, that is going that could potentially happen. And, and it's this is I feel that there will be a calculated uh, exchange, a calculated risk, so to speak. And the reason why I say that is because you have to think, we know that the new that the reset is here, a new system, new governance, a new uh, one world, excuse me, a one world uh, currency, religion, all this stuff. Now, we know this is coming. All right. Now, we also know that there's people that are not going to be for that. All right. Here in the United States, we call them MAGA. All right. Uh, we know they're not going to be for that. However, how do you get everybody on the same page? It's called fear. We saw that back in 2020 when we were all, you know, uh, when, you know, 2020 was the year of the masquerade party that never ended. Right. So we have, you know, that's how everybody got on board. So what's the best way to get everybody on board of this new system and have them beg for it? Right. Not the government impose it, but actually have them beg for it. Launch and launch a strategic attack, hypothetically, okay, because we got to be careful with algorithms tonight, but hypothetically, we launch attack 
and we launch it in an area that's densely populated. We show those images over and over on television and social media, and it pops up on your on your smartwatch, right? And it devastates everyone. I mean, it, it'll put the fear of anything inside of you to see those images being played, to see 10 million people just disappear, be vaporized. That happens, you're going to get an outcry globally in this world for a new system. And the government's going to say, cool, you asked for it, here it is. And then magically, it's going to appear overnight. And this is where I personally think that this Russian and Ukrainian thing that has been instigated, propagated, and purposely started is going to go. All right. I think Putin, you know, I'm not saying he's a good guy. The guy has got a lot of issues. But I think Putin knows this. And this is why we haven't seen the the, the steps taken uh, that we thought we would see by now. Right. And so uh, that's partially that's what I think. That's where I think this is going. Uh, you know, you've got other countries that are going to get involved, too. You know, you've know, you got Iran that's getting involved. You got Turkey that's getting involved. You got Let's, China. That's getting involved. We'll stop right here for just a minute. Perfect. <laughs> and then we're going to we're going to keep I'm going to keep I'm going to I'm going <laughs> to I'll tell you, Brother Anthony, if it doesn't sound wrong, I feel like I got a bulldog on a leash and I'm fixing to let him go again. <laughs> I told you it was going to be fun. <laughs> All right. Now, I'm going to help back you up on something here. Now, okay. Those of you that are listening, you have to understand, I didn't know what Pastor Anthony was going to say tonight. I did not even know his view on Ukraine, the flag, et cetera. <laughs> the calculated uh, response, except all these things here. Let me first state by one, my hat is truly off for you recognizing uh, something was amiss when overnight everybody's got the Ukrainian flags everything, everywhere. Mm -hmm. And like yourself, to me, the tragedy of war is a tragedy of war. I mm -hmm. feel for the Ukrainian people, and to me, they're Ukrainian people from, from the furthest west, if you go all the way to Lviv, all the way over to uh, the Donbass region, they're Ukrainians. Uh, now, granted, ethnic Russians, ethnic uh, Europeans, I get that. I understand that. Mm -hmm. But these people are the victim of this war. And it is true when you can see, even like in the case of Twitter, overnight, the only thing we're getting is what the Western propaganda is. Now, because I have a direct connection right into the Joint Chiefs of Staff, I already know exactly what's going on, what's really happening on the ground, and I know the propaganda from the, the real deal. But you were able to observe it by the mere fact that you just know this just doesn't happen like that, and it'd be normal. Right. And I wished that American people... Western people were not so complacent to fall into the same rut and just automatically assume everything is okay when it's not. My father-in-law was Ukrainian. Uh, God rest his heart and soul right now. But uh, so I have a feel, I have feel for the Ukrainian people because of that. And mm -hmm. his family, I guess, would, would be more in the middle. He was born in a part where it was Hungary, et cetera. Now, so we'll put that there. Secondly, you talked about the calculated response. Mm -hmm. You talked about we're sitting here on the verge of a new world order, one world religion. All the all the cards are in place. So it's not going to be all of a sudden everybody just goes wacko out there and starts shooting off nuclear weapons. That's exactly correct. I have been told over and over and over, and even to the briefing i was in uh yesterday or day before yesterday we spoke about how that over the weekend russia was dropping nuclear missiles inside the ocean setting them up the hypersonic type turning them off so we can't track the rascals and yet they could turn them on at any moment and put it on any city they want mm -hmm. now with that being stated i'm constantly reminded Russia is not going to take and just start lobbing a bunch of nukes our way. Right. Uh, even under the war game scenarios, which 
everything, by the way, is scripted. But under the war game scenarios, it's always stated Putin will do a calculated response. In other words, if we do A, he will respond to A with B. He won't go beyond that. He's trying to keep everything in the confines of Ukraine. But at the same time, I've also been advised that the oligarchs, the elite that want a new world order are ready for it to be done now. And that Mm -hmm. the only way they can get that to happen is they've got to cripple America just enough to where the Americans will call out for it. Right. Just like it's your, just like what you were saying, Pastor Anthony. And that, and I said, well, how are they planning on pulling that off? They said they're pushing Putin into a corner. When they say Ukraine is launching attacks deep inside of Russia, total nonsense. Ukraine has no technology, no abilities, no capabilities of anything to do that. The United States, NATO, we do it. We go in there and we pretend like we're there to train the Ukrainians how to use our weapons. No, that's, do we really need 150,000 uh, men to go show them how to use the weapons? No, but we go 150,000 men in there to help use the weapons against the Russians. The Russians are not stupid. They know this. Mm-hmm. Uh, we send in teams. They talk about, well, I saw an article the other day. Ukrainians is taking the intelligence they've learned from the Americans, and they're going deeper inside of Russian territory, sabotaging, sabotaging. Right. The only way we can technically say that is maybe we have one Ukrainian that was trained a part of a special forces, and he goes in as part of the operation of NATO. Mm-hmm. Uh, or we will use... To, for deflection purposes, we will use uh, uh, special forces, but they are now part of independent groups going in. And I do know that for a fact. Uh, I know one particular, in fact, he's just come back off the battlefield that's been in behind the enemy lines. So mm-hmm. Russia knows this. We're provoking them. They want to calculate a response. They want to see Russia hit the United States. And to me, it's only a matter of time. And if Russia doesn't pull the trigger, well, guess what? Some other rogue group is going to pull the trigger yep. to get the response you spoke about, Pastor mm-hmm. Anthony. Right. So yeah. take it from there. Let's 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 go into some more of the things that's on your mind about this. Yeah, um, you know, you're, you're you're absolutely right. You know, that if Russia doesn't do it, uh, somebody else is. And, and there's a there's plenty of people, uh, you know. They got plenty of people in their in their disposal to do that, and you know, notice I use the word they, uh, and that's because my personal opinion. Once again, I, I don't have you know, just to let your viewers know, man, I, I don't have like a you know a, a government agent in my pocket or anything like that. You know, I'm not I'm not one of these people that you know uh, can reveal secrets to anyone. I'm just I, I'm just somebody that sits and I'm I'm I'm, I'm observing and I'm watching, and I know what Scripture says. Okay. And so thing is, is that somebody is in control. All right. Somebody is in control of all of this. They're pulling all the strings, you know, and you had made mention that, you know, we're pushing Putin into a corner, which we are. And, it, and like you said, it is purposely being done. And I definitely believe that uh, these people are like, you know, they're, they're searing uh, for for this response. You know, they're just like they're like it's, it's like a dog going after a bloody animal. I mean, it's just, I mean, you, you just can't get them to, to quench, quench that taste enough, you know, and, uh, you know, Putin's not going to do it. Now, if he doesn't do it, you know, uh, who are the other players that would be interested in, in filling that role? Well, you got rocket man, uh, that would do it. And that's, you know, in North Korea, he would love to be, be the one to make history. Uh, you've got, uh, China potentially, um, although, you know, China's got a lot of interest in the United States and a lot of money invested. So it may not be in their best interest to, to really go too far into that, uh, just because they would be losers in that deal too. Uh, you got Iran who would love to do it. You've got a slew of rogue, uh, you know, uh, Middle Eastern, uh, teams out there. Um, that would love to 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 do that. So I mean, we've got plenty of enemies out there that have the capability, and of course, you know, uh, all backed by. Let's just, I'm just going to say it: the BRICS nations, uh, all those nations that are coming together. You know, they're all backed by them. They all working together, and uh, you know, they 
they make up, you know, over half the, the world's population. And so really it's basically, it's coming down, uh, Stephen, it, it's really coming down to NATO versus BRICS uh, is where yeah, we're going. Exactly. And, and uh, let, me, let me, let me give you share with the people again, another one, you just hit another one right on the money. Uh, and that was China. Uh, your analysis on China is, as you said, they have so much investment here. It's not in their best interest. And I'm just kind of paraphrasing for them mm -hmm. to do that. And uh, I know that China has enough military troops in Canada to help launch an attack on the U.S. Mm -hmm. But when I discuss that in one of the meetings I was in just recently, in fact, I said, are we still facing an invasion from China? They don't have forces on the southern end, but we know they have them on the northern end. And uh, if China were to come in, uh, are we going to be are, are we facing a nuclear threat from China? The, the response was to me that uh, the counterpart that I work with is one. I'm not the expert on China, but I do the colleagues that I have are and the issue is, is that are the or the short of the answer that is, is that no, China will not use that type of force against us because just as you just said, Pastor Anthony, he said that there's they have too much invested in this nation and mm -hmm. to nuke this nation would be totally counterproductive to what they want. They're wanting to control the nation. Uh, whether it be uh, after a war that Russia starts or whatever, or that we end up with Russia, or after the collapse of an economy, they want to come in as a UN peacekeeping force. In fact, they've made the agreement with uh, the Biden administration that if we ever have civil war, they would be the ones that have first choice to have troops on the ground because they want to protect their assets, right. quote unquote. So. Right. Again, you're 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 hitting the you're really hitting right on the nerve um, as a believer and, and 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 you know as I think of these things, I mean I know everybody thinks immediately of the situation we're in too. A lot of times we think of Matthew 24 where Jesus speaks about we'd have wars, rumors of wars, uh, you know, and, and we would have uh, plagues and and diverse places, things like that, you know. Let me ask you this, and we'll sum up in the area here, so we can move on to this to the to this other issue here of the atmospheric problems that we're facing right now. Because I want to get into that from a biblical standpoint as well. Um, besides Matthew twenty four, where do you see we, you, we're at biblically, uh, in your opinion, on the current situation that's happening on, on a global scale? Um, I think Ezekiel, um, Ezekiel is a good, uh, is where we're at. Um, I can't, I'm terrible with addresses, scriptures. Um, but we, it talks about, uh, it's the scriptures. And just we, paraphrasing is fine. Yeah, I'm going to paraphrase it. You know, we get, there's two chapters, uh, is it Ezekiel 34, I think. Uh, anyway, but it, it begins to describe uh, a battle. And it begins to describe this massive loss of life that takes place. And it even begins to even uh, give the description of uh, what appears to be a nuclear weapon being detonated. Uh, and this is definitely a prophecy uh, of the end times. And this is kind of like, in my personal opinion, uh, there's people who will differ, who will disagree with me on this. But in my personal opinion, it's almost like uh, it, it's the final catapult uh in in time events that propels us into everything that we're discussing tonight it, it it just launches us into uh one world government one world currency one world religion the antichrist coming in uh we start we see a lot of activity with jerusalem um because israel becomes directly affected no matter what happens uh around the globe israel will be affected no matter what theater what stage or when, what time period these things happens, it, Israel will be directly affected. Well, one, All scenarios. One thing's for sure when it comes to Israel being affected, <clears throat> um, and I've known this from the Intel community before as well, is generally when 
Middle Eastern nations are involved, even if they hate the United States and they really want to attack the United States, uh, Israel will become the target for that. Now, mm -hmm. the sad part right now in Israel is that there's been so much corruption going on through the government. They do enough shooting themselves in the foot without having to worry about everybody from the external side coming into, right. to, to the mix. Uh, so, but, but you're right. The situation with Ukraine is one aspect, but we are definitely faced with, uh, still more Middle Eastern turmoil coming up. Uh, and, and, and what we can do maybe in another broadcast, we can get into the Silk Road Initiative, uh, how that's going to play out, because to me, that's part of going to be part of that new world system there, uh, no doubt. And, uh, and, and, you know, e even going into China, the South Pacific, et cetera, things like that. But beside one thing, and I'm just curious because, and I don't know if Mike's ever spoke about this issue here, but we discuss this when I'm talking to people in Washington, is that the wars that you see on the ground are generally scripted. That's what we mm -hmm. they say. They're scripted. They're planned. They're 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 staged out. Although you, because I remember one time we were dealing with an intel issue and and uh, we were trying to find out some things about Iran, um, and I'm like I I just kind of threw my hands up in the air and I said, wait a minute. I said, if we know that wars are scripted, why do you need intel out of Iran? You know. It made no sense to me. Why do we need to know something about I Iran if if we know that everybody is on a leash, so to speak? Mm -hmm. And uh, and the answer back to me was that even though the leadership in these nations know the parts that they have to play, you still have people on the ground that could make a mistake, pull a trigger when they're not supposed to pull a trigger and cause a chain of events to happen. So they try to stay up on top of the intel as in regards to that. Now, with that being said, though, one thing that I was reminded of just recently is even as Ukraine really has gotten completely bonkers, and, I, and I'll say this, Pastor Anthony, I know people directly involved in the drone section of this war. Mm hmm and the pilots are saying that Ukraine nearly doesn't even look like a civilization any longer. It's that devastated by war. Mm -hmm. uh, bombs that are being used between the United States, NATO, and Russia inside of Ukraine, typically when they drop something, it kills anything and everything and everybody in its path. It's that big of stuff they're using over there. It's the uh, bunker busters is what they're using, aren't they? I, I've not been told bunker busters are being used yet, but I would not doubt that they are because when you're trying to hit command and control centers, they're underground. And so they do, they typically use uh, bunker busters for that. They are against uh, the Geneva Convention, I believe, but I think they're using them. Right. And and Russia is using hypersonic missiles, uh, mm -hmm. cruise missiles and stuff that we can't stop. Uh, they took out four of our uh, what we call safe havens, but they're really mm -hmm. military bases. They killed everybody on the bases. Yeah. Um, now, with that being stated, though, I'm seeing all this carnage, hearing all this stuff that's going on, and then I'm reminded it's nothing but public consumption. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. I said, for what? Mm -hmm. And I was told, so that you don't look up. I said, just like the stupid movie, right? And he right. said, exactly. He said, what's what's going on above your head is so much worse than what's going on on this earth that it keeps the people's minds away from knowing what's really happening above your head. Mm -hmm. Now, with that being stated, Pastor Anthony, you listen to Mike far more than I do. I catch broadcast here and there. Uh, Mike is so eloquent at being able to put it out. I know neither neither one of us we, we we admit we we're not that we don't have that type of eloquency, but I want to throw some things out there, and then maybe if you can expound two ways: one, 
just from things that you can remember that you've heard already as well. And then biblically, where are we going at even in this area here? But for example, in the briefing I was in uh, yesterday, we spoke about the exosphere because people that don't know, and I'll just, I'll just quickly, uh, I'll name the layers off so people understand what we have. We have the exosphere, the thermosphere, the mesosphere, uh, the stratosphere, and the troposphere. And of course, you have your magnetosphere, which basically encompasses everything within that. And then, of course, Mike would tell you, you go even that, you know, you go around our solar system, there's another bubble. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, sure, space yeah. is not an empty void of just air. A lot of people get that idea in their mind. It's not. Space is more like an oily substance is what it is. Um, and that's something they don't tell you in school. But coming back down to the Earth area, um, the exosphere... And, and, and I'm going to say it like this, too, because Mike talked about the veil. He said, you have this veil that kind of em- envelopes everything. The moon is right. He says, he says, right on the, the, uh, the, 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 he said, the moon rides the veil. That's the way he puts it. Mm-hmm. And he said, but what if suddenly for a brief period of time, the veil is removed and then you're able to see and you will see things you never knew existed. Mm-hmm. He talked about a pyramid floating by. He talked about ancient Roman ruins and things like that. All right. Now, I can tell you because from the standpoint of what I know, we've already seen these things. We've detected those coming around the sun already. So we know that we're entering into that part of the solar system because our our Earth goes through a corkscrew. And I know flat earthers that are listening, they're they're going bonkers when I say all all of this. If, if they had any idea and knew that that was created, that whole system was created for a different, I won't even go into that. I, I, I don't want to cause an offense, but I know what it was created for to keep people to where you don't know, but it's okay. <laughs> As I used to say, if you believe we're in a dome, okay, the dome is about to fall. Think about that then. All right. But anyway, as we're going through this corkscrew like this, we're coming to the part of space now to where what happened thousands of years ago from the passing of this this uh planetary system i'll say it like that Mm -hmm. caused a lot of damage to the earth which sucked things up out of our out of our earth people would say well that can't happen well it can if the magnetosphere collapses same thing with an asteroid you could say uh, flat earthers would say, well, there's no such thing as asteroids, but then you got the people that say, well, there's no no way an asteroid can hit the earth. It can if your whole atmosphere begins to collapse or weakened enough for it to get through. Mm-hmm. Scientifically, we are 90% down on the exosphere. That's our first line of defense. Um, when it comes to our thermosphere, we are suffering at a 25% outage on the thermosphere right now. When you get into the mesosphere, the mesosphere is what creates the magnetic shielding kind of helping, kind of does for the magnetosphere as well, that keeps the asteroids and things like that out. We are bombarding the mesosphere, Pastor Anthony, with CERN. We're using, and I say CERN, the the Hadron Collider, we have, I know of seven of those on this planet. They're not necessarily all the exact same, but they work and operate very similarly. They Mm -hmm. open up dimensions. The governments on the earth that cooperate and work with these things feel like if it becomes too much of a problem, they can turn it off and everything resets. It doesn't work like that. But at the same time that we're bombarding the mesosphere with with the Hadron Colliders from underneath that's ripping it open, we're also being hit by this unusual waves coming in from space that when we go through this part of the galactic plane, we always run into these. They hit the sun that causes a reaction to the sun that hits our magnetosphere and we are being hammered from above. Right. With that in mind, we're in a world of mess on this planet right now. Mm-hmm. And 
I know you also had a guest on just recently. So however you could kind of maybe comment and share some thoughts that, that you've heard that you, that you know about uh, yeah. pastor Anthony uh, and then perhaps uh, then, then, then let's loop it back around even prophetically because it's almost like we're back at the days of Noah again. And of course, Jesus says that in Matthew 24 as well, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. And a lot of times people just think of about, well, it's going to be a lot of, you know, uh, immorality on the earth. Mm -hmm. I think he's using that, though, too, to show you just how corrupt, because that's when the fallen angels and things like that and the technology yeah. was all here as well. Take it away, brother. All right, you're gonna you're gonna let the dog off the chain, brother. I'm not right. even gonna hold the leash. I'm just letting it go. You know what happens when the bulldog is running free? All right, <laughs> all right. I'm going free range then. All right. I, I'm glad that you. I'm glad that you ended that with saying um, the days of Noah, Noah, because that's exactly where I'm gonna start. Um, so here's what I, here's what I know. I'm, I'm gonna try to mix in a little bit uh, with what I personally feel in this subject, also with what Mike has talked about and. Uh, the gentleman that you're referring to was uh, uh, Jim from Earth Changes Channel. We just talked about this this week, and he actually just sent me something earlier today. Uh, he was saying that, you know, if you're able to include this bit of information uh, from NASA. And so uh, since that door is open, I'm going to do that. But I want to start with Noah first, because uh, the days of Noah, we know that Earth wasn't always what it was today. It's not what it was, what we know it today. There was a time period where the Earth was surrounded in a canopy, and that canopy was was actually water. Okay, kept our temperatures very tempered. You know, um, hypoth hypothetically speaking, north north south pole was probably around forty degrees all year round. The equator was probably around seventy five degrees all year round. That's how it was a temperate climate at that time. Okay, and so uh, then. Noah's flood came. Now, how did Noah's flood come? Because we didn't have rain was nobody knew what rain was. Right. Uh, you know, it was a heavy dew. The Bible tells us there was a heavy dew that would come upon the earth. And this is how everything was re regen re uh, vegetized and things like that. So what broke the canopy was something in the heavens came about. Of course, this was a judgment that God was putting on earth because as you stated, the immorality and things that were happening at that time. So what did God send to come to earth to bring about that judgment that caused to bring the canopy to pop? And this is what happened. It was like a water balloon. It popped. Everything came down. The fountains of the earth were opened. They came up. Atmosphere came down. We had a massive flood. By the way, that water's still here. Okay. It went back into the ground. It's still here. And so uh, what happened? Well, now we can look and say, okay, well, it's this system that came in and all the debris that came with it. All right. And so there's always a, uh, you know, you learn in, 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 in school, there's always a cause and effect. There's always a, a reaction to whatever comes around, you know, there's a positive and a negative. All right. And so when something that comes in that is that's not foreign, everything has to react and adapt to those things. All right. And also know that the way God created Earth is that whenever something happens to Earth, Earth's automatic response, and this is what God has created Earth to do, is to try to hold on to what hold on to that center point of creation no matter what happens. Okay. It's kind of like uh, the human body, you know, it's going to hold on to his life as no matter what happens, what has happened, what happens to the human body. All right. The body automatically responds and it's, and it begins to protect its core organs. That means things from your hands, your feet, your legs, your extremities are no more. It's all about the core. Everything comes inward. Earth is going to do the exact same thing. Everything is coming inward to hold on to that balance and, and that what we know as the homeostasis to hold on to because God created earth to automatically respond in that way. All right. Now I'm getting somewhere with this. Okay. And so <laughs> we're, so we're, you know, that's, that was like what, over 3000 years ago, sort of speak, you know, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm guessing, you know, uh, when that, when that took place, some people will say probably longer. But whatever, um, when that came, well, now we're coming back to, around to it again, just as you pointed out that as it was in the days of Noah, shall, so shall it be 
at the end of times. Well, we're back again. All right. This thing's coming. Around. Except this time around, Bible tells us that he's not going to destroy the earth by, by water, but by fire. Now, where's this fire going to come from? All right. Remember, everything's coming inwardly. So it's coming from outer space. It's coming from this debris. It's coming from the from the iron oxide that's coming in. Okay. This stuff's going to be flammable when it hits. All right. Everything is being moved inward because that is the response that our planet's doing. This is why you're going to start seeing our atmosphere is coming closer inward. Our jet streams are coming closer inward. Why? Because there's something that is out there that's not supposed to be there. It's not in the normal balance. And so the earth is having to react to this balance or, or react to whatever's coming in. So everything is going to pull in. What happens when things start pulling in? All right. That means something's going to get caught with it. All right. And that's where people are getting uh, people are getting very concerned right now. And, and it's starting to leak out. All right. Because we've got this, we've got these things coming in. We have a comet that's coming in in February. It's a green comet. Right. We're all going to see this with the naked eye. It's got a debris trail with it that no one's talking about. And we're in this period right now where everything's being kind of sucked in. And I'm trying to make this understandably easy for everybody. That debris is going to come in. And just as you stated you know, our shields, what we're down 90%. We don't have anything to really hold that back. Now, what does that mean? Somebody may be like, what does that mean? Okay, normally it's not unusual for Earth to have some sort of debris come in. I mean, we do it happens all the time. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, but it burns up in our atmosphere as it goes through our layers. All right. Well, those layers are now condensed. And some of those layers have been have been damaged because of a lot of these waves that we've had coming in. All right. And so because we don't have that that protection there like we used to have, that means these things that are inbound, they're going to make it to the surface. They're going to make it in ground. All right. And so this is where the concern is. This is why we're seeing a lot of these underground cities being built. This is why we're seeing, you know, uh, you know, hypothetically, uh, we're, we're seeing elitists are going underground. You know, this is the rumor that's going around. And so uh, we're seeing a lot of these different things. So now. You know, the, you had question, you had asked the question, actually, before I even get there, let me read this to you real quick. Uh, it said that, you know, uh, this is what Earth Changes was telling, uh, telling me on the video we did. He was saying that NASA has found new uh, has found a new uh, debris field that they have not classified it because it's not. Uh, uh, hold on, let me, I'm going to read exactly what he said. NASA found a new debris field that they have not classified it's likely normally that they've kept it classified and it's heading this way and it could relate to the red oxide rocks. We also know this as the red kachina, which is what this group's called, but they are coming in with wormwood. All right. Whoa. So this is what he's saying. This is what hit has come in his direction. All right. So there's red kachinas, there's blue kachinas, but they're just, you know, don't let the name freak you out. They're just the name of the, of the rock systems. There's also the Trojans. All right. We're seeing some of this coming in now. I don't know about you, but, uh, you know, here here in Michigan, where I'm at, I follow several, like, meteorological groups here. People are showing doorbell cams of these rocks coming down. I mean, it's almost every day you can go on there and like, oh, another meteor tonight. Okay. We're not in any typ typical period where we get meteors right now, but they're coming in every day. All right. We're getting footage coming in from Dubai of – a cluster of meteors come not just one, not just two, like 10 coming in. All right. So it, it's already begun uh, right now. You know, it doesn't it doesn't appear that they're hitting the ground, so to speak. Um, but that could be changing very soon you know, or it's just not being reported. One or two things. Uh, and so there's that aspect. Of course, Mike from, from COT, he's talked about these inbounds coming. He's talking about the, the red iodine things coming in. Uh, the question you were asking me, and I'm getting back to, is what do I think is causing all of this? Okay, what, what, where are these waves coming from? Is it coming from what we think is Planet X? Is it, is it coming from a supernova? You know, did a supernova go off and didn't do something? Is it coming from Nibiru, Planet 9, whatever it may be? I'm going to give you a spiritual answer. You ready? I'm ready. My spiritual answer is this, is that we know... But the second coming of the Lord is coming. We know that Jesus is returning to this planet. A new Jerusalem is coming. A new heaven and a new earth is coming. A new kingship is coming. 
think about this for a second. And in this, there's no science. I remind you, there's no science. This is just me. Okay. I'm just being me. Think about it for a second. If heaven and earth are moving and there's and the, the creator of life itself, the creator of the cosmos, the creator of everything that we see and we know is coming here to rule and reign on little old planet earth. Would you not think that everything that we know would not react to that? Don't you think that the things that we're seeing may not be the return of Christ's coming? Well, all these the, waves, all I, this energy, all this. Now, I'm not saying that there isn't something out there that's causing it. I'm just giving you a spiritual perspective on this. I'm not I'm not saying that there isn't because there is something out there when it's been documented before. You can go back and you, and you know this. You can go back through ancient uh, Aztec writings. You can go back through, you know, the stuff that, that they got in South America. And you know that this has been here before. It's been documented, uh, this. But I just wanted to kind of open a door there to your viewers tonight and give it a more of a spiritual perspective that the reason why we're seeing this, because the scripture tells us that creation itself will tremble. Yes. Creation itself will tremble. That doesn't mean your cat and dog, okay, is going to tremble. This is talking about everything that God has ever made, any everything that God has ever produced, okay? This is talking about not just earth, this is talking about every single galaxy. This is talking about everything on the outer rim of our universe. Everything, creation is going to tremble in these days that we're in. Just my thought. You know, Pastor Anthony, I have to tell you something. When you when you give it in that perspective there, it reminds me of a lady I met years ago. <laughs> and she was elderly. And I was bringing to her an organ uh, that you play, the type that you play. Mm-hmm. And I brought it from, I don't know, probably up around, I think it was Ohio. I picked it up in Ohio. I was doing a route. I had a big moving company at the time. And uh, we were coming back down. And she was in Florida. And as I was coming in, I call her husband and I tell him, I said, you know, I could wait till in the morning. I said, but I'm actually passing your city uh, this evening, but it's probably about 8.30 or so before I can get there. He said, my wife would love to get it tonight. So I get there, and as I uh, come up to the door, uh, this elderly lady opens the door, and she takes me by my beard, and she just goes like this. She says, I have waited for you for so long. And she said, and you're more beautiful than I ever thought you were. And I thought at first, okay, she must be losing it. <laughs> you know, I figured, okay, she's probably got something wrong with her and she's just kind of losing it. But I thought she was very sweet, you know. So she said, won't you come in? And, uh, but she was speaking almost on a spiritual level though. Mm -hmm. And I did detect that, you know, because she wasn't talking about like that. Cause I know I ain't pretty, you know, so, but, it's the way she was expressing herself. And she she says to me, she says, come to my room with me. I'll show you where we will put the organ at. So I walked into her room and she showed me this big place on the wall. And, um, and then she says to me like this. She said, do you have a moment? I said, yes, ma'am. She says, sit down beside me here. She said, you know, I came to the United States to find Jesus. And she said, in my country, I had never heard of him. She said, I had to come all the way to this country to learn about him. And she said, you know, one day, she said, I'm sitting here on the edge of the bed, just like I'm sitting with you here now. And she said, and I hear the footsteps of a man walking in my house. She says, but I was not afraid. And she said, and when I, when she said, the man walked into my room and she said, and he was a beautiful man with long hair. And she said he had a robe on. And she said, no, it was not Jesus. She said, but the man walked over to me and took me by the hand. And I forget her name now, but she she's, she called her name at the time. And 
He said to her, said, would you like to go and see where Jesus lives? And she said, I thought, well, sure I would. And he says, take my hand. And he took her by the hand. And and I'm getting to a point for this, the reason I wanted to tell you this. She says that and within a moment, she said, I was up above the earth looking back. And she said, I saw a lady on the earth. And she said, and suddenly she said, the lady had red hair. And I knew every freckle, how many she had on her face. And she said, and then the angel said, and then you wonder how Jesus knows the very hairs on your head, right? And she looks at him and he says, close your eyes and go with me. She said, when I opened my eyes the second time, she said, we were like in a world just like we are here on earth. She said, but there was one difference. She said, everything there was alive. She said, the water was praising him. She said, the leaves, as the wind blew the leaves of the trees and it they clapped their little leaves together. They were worshiping Jesus Christ. She said the rocks, she said the, the big mountains worshiped him in a deep voice and the little pebbles in the stream worshiped him in a high pitched voice, you know, but the thing that caught my attention and I thought about this as you were talking about in, in the opposite though, and I guess we'd say in a negative is that at his presence, everything is moved. As mm-hmm. Jesus even said, when when um, he, he said, you know, if, if 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 the people had held their peace, the rocks would immediately cry out. Right. You know, and so if we think about, and that's just a little glimpse of what this sister had told me there, how that she went to a place where everything was alive. Then what could we expect if we come through a system in this universe, you know, and then if the presence of God is truly coming, then would not everything come to life as a result? Right. You know? So, so yeah, it's, 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 it's a very beautiful analogy. And, um, and I want, I do want to say one thing. It keeps coming up on my mind, uh, pastor Anthony, and that is Mike mentioned about this, uh, tale of this system when he did the broadcast last night. And he said, what if it's arsenic in it? And I don't know if he may know something about measurements that I'm not aware of as of yet, because I haven't heard that as of yet. But I will tell you one thing. I have known now for several years, and I've told people for several years, the U.S. government is stockpiling water, drinking water, at the the most alarming rate you could ever imagine. And the reason they're doing that is because they know that the system that's coming through is going to contaminate our water. Mm -hmm. So I've always told the people about that. And I was a little bit premature, even like when you're talking about the asteroids coming in and things, I was a little bit premature when I began to first release that type of information because it didn't happen in the time period that, that, that I was looking at. So I've kind of held back more from speaking about it as much now but I'm glad that you brought it up tonight, what is being seen, because regardless, I still know it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, timing, we, you know, we everybody's been trying to figure out when this system would come through. Right. And I think, though, we it is upon us. I think we are in a very serious situation right now. But I also think, too, Pastor Anthony, as you do on your broadcast, and I think it's an appropriate time to bring this out even now, and that is to speak to the hearts of the people that are listening here tonight, because you don't have to be fearful. Right. But what you do want is you want to know that your walk with Jesus Christ is a 100%. You don't want, as I've often used the expression, you don't want to borrow the name of Jesus Christ. Right. You want to borrow the name of Christianity. Because if you borrow something, you got to pay it back. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, you need to know him as intimately as you can. I mean, it's it's a it's it's an engagement. If you're Mm -hmm. going to have an engagement, you don't get an engagement just by, you know, hey, how you doing, sir, type of thing there. And so, Pastor Anthony, if you would, I would like for you just to kind of close in prayer tonight and 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 give that offer for people to sincerely take that take a take inventory in their own lives whether, yeah. whether it's just a renewal 
whether it's the first time they've ever given their life to Christ. Uh, and, and I've had people write in that are that are Hindu and everything else in this program because we're only about 50% Christian on this broadcast, and then we have every other walk of life. So you have one of the largest audiences tonight, you know, and I don't know how many people will tune in, but I mean, uh, nearly 400,000 uh, subscribers are capable of hearing. And I do know for a fact from our iConnect platform, five times more people will hear this broadcast than what you will see in the numbers because we have a true algorithm to be able to, or not algorithm, but whatever whatever it does, it counts the, the people that view. So there's going to be people from every walk of life uh, will probably translate it in multiple languages as well. So, you know, if for, with that in mind, if you can just speak to the hearts of the people in prayer, brother, brother, uh, Anthony, I would appreciate that. Absolutely. Uh, before we get into prayer, I kind of I want to encourage the audience uh, before we do that. Um, you know, uh, you talked you said just a second ago that there's no reason to fear. And uh, there isn't really. Uh, if you're really if you're truly saved and have a relationship with Jesus Christ, this is actually a time to really come alive. Uh, it's a time to be excited because we're seeing uh, prophecy being fulfilled. We're seeing Matthew 24, Luke 21 happening in our in our in our own very eyes, you know, I mean, these things are happening. Um, and so there's no reason to fear, you know, the scripture, the Bible has over 360 plus references, uh, uh, verses that say, do not fear. Okay. That's like one for every day of the year. Uh, and so, you know, fear, if fear is just, it, it's, it's really, fear really doesn't exist. If you think about it, it, it it's, it's something of something that could happen, but not likely to happen. Okay. And it's just something that the devil likes to play on our minds and things like that. But tonight, uh, if you do have fear of your, in your heart, you know, you're concerned about the things that are coming upon the earth. You're concerned about, uh, you know, you're worried about what's going to happen with the, with our government and what's happening with, you know, that you talked about, we talked about the Chinese over in, in the Canadian border and, and, you know, things that are going to be happening around the world. If you have a fear uh, of uh, things that could happen to you personally, if you have a fear of, uh, you know, dying, so to speak, then um, you you need to come to a place where you get that right with Jesus Christ, because with in Jesus Christ, there is no fear. Uh, you know, even the idea of dying shouldn't scare you. Uh, <laughs> if anything, it should bring you hope because you know where you're going next. And so I would say that to, to the audience, you know, check yourself uh, and really do some serious, as they would say down south, do some serious soul searching. Okay. Yes. Uh, you know, make sure that you, that your, that your ducks in a row, make sure that your personal wagons are circled, make sure that your house is in order uh, and be prepared spiritually. You know, uh, I'm going to be, I'm going to be guest appearing on a, on a YouTube channel uh, this Sunday night. We're going to be talking about how to be spiritually prepared. Uh, and we're going to be talking about being the bride Christ. How do we do that? Uh, in these days. And uh, one of the things that I'm going to be mentioning is, you know, in old, in old Jewish tradition, when the bride would wait for her groom, uh, there was a very long uh, process that would take place of getting ready and being prepared. But the thing was, is she had to be prepared. She never knew when the groom was coming. Okay. Never would know. It could be at midnight when the groom would come, but her job was to make sure she was prepared and not caught off guard when the groom would come. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm telling you to the audience tonight. We are the bride. The church is the bride. Us believers are the bride. All right. Jesus Christ is the groom. He's coming for us. You need to do everything you can now to be ready and be prepared because you do not want to be caught off guard when this happens. Pastor Anthony, how do we do that tonight? You make sure that you get everything under the blood of Jesus Christ. Every sin, right. every word, every feeling, every single thing, whatever has been bothering you, whatever strongholds you have in your life, whatever is tormenting you, because that's a real big spirit these days is a spirit of term of a of, uh, torment uh, that people really deal with. And it, and it usually leads to a lot of um, addictions and things like that. Most addictions right. come, come from that. And so uh, we need to get those things under the blood. Repent. Okay. Don't just ask for forgiveness. But really repent. Come to that place where you just hate doing that thing. You don't want to do that thing anymore. You don't want to feel that thing no more. You're done with it. Come to that place. Mike talked about this just like three or four weeks ago, actually, at COT. But you got to come to that place where you just hate that thing. You don't want it anymore. Repent. Okay? Mm -hmm. Seriously, repent. 
I mean, you can't, don't be like some people, oh, God forgive me for stealing that car. All right. And then the next day you go and you steal another car because all you did was just ask Jesus to overlook what you did. You didn't really mean it. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that's you know, right. Don't, don't do that. Really repent. I mean, when you do that, that's when revival comes into your life. And that's when revival comes into your home and everything that you've been lacking in your life happens. It, it, it happens right then and there. Then it doesn't matter what happens around you because you're alive now. You're living in a right in revival in your spirit. The rocks from the heavens can come down all around you. The government can pull up with army tanks and drag you out of your house. But you know what? You got revival inside of you and you can weather through anything that happens. That's right. You'll survive anything that God will take care of you. We were just talking about on Tuesday night, you know, the, the weather situations that are happening. You know, people are going through tornadoes and floods and earthquakes, you know, and we're getting stories coming in of these of these tornadoes hitting, destroying neighborhoods. But guess whose houses are still standing? The children of God. Those who serve God and are trusting in him, their house is the only house that's standing. We're getting stories of that. Yeah. I'm telling you. If you're in the center of God's will, if you're in the center of the flame and you are practicing true repentance in your life, which that's what gives you forgiveness, by the way, you got nothing to fear. God will take care of you. And if God needs you to move, you'll move. All right. He told Joseph yeah. to move with Mary. He told uh, Joseph what he needed to do, told Noah what he needed to do. You know, he, he has guided people in seasons and in times and he will guide you. If you're in harm's way, God will let you know. He'll take you where you need to go. All right. And so tonight, maybe you're wanting that reinsurance tonight. You're, you're wanting that hope. You're wanting that revival. You're, you're wanting to be done with that. I'm going to pray just as Brother Stephen here has asked us to do. And, if you know, my prayer isn't going to save you, okay? It's your belief and commitment and covenant Amen. prayer Amen. that will save you. I got nothing to do with this, okay? I'm just, we're just opening a door tonight. It's up to you how you respond to that. So let's every, everyone that's watching tonight, let's just yes. bow our heads. And even if you are saved, you know, this is a good prayer to, to, to pray anyway, just for your own spirit, okay? And so, dear Lord, we just thank you, God, tonight for uh, everyone that's watching us and everyone will be watching in the archives and in later dates to come, God. And we pray a special blessing over every viewer that's been here this evening. And tonight, we just give ourselves back over to you, God. We just pray, Lord, that you would forgive us of all of our sins, Father God, every transgression, every iniquity, Father God, every thought that's been displeasing before you, every emotion, Father God. Every physical and mental thing that we've done that has not been in line with your word, God, we ask for your forgiveness, Lord God, tonight. And we repent, Father God, of these things that we've done. Lord, we choose to live our lives for you, Lord. We choose to put our faith, our trust in the things of you, Lord. We believe that your, that your son died on the cross, Lord, for our sins. And it's by his blood, Father God, that we have atonement of our sins. It's by, our, by his blood, Lord, that we have freedom. It's by his blood, Father God, that we are healed of all of our transgressions, God. It's by his stripes, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord, for doing those things for, for us, Father God. We receive your free gift of salvation tonight. We receive, Father God, and commit ourselves to you, Lord, in rededication of our lives. And we pray that you would use us in these end times, Lord God, to win souls over to you, God, and to do great and mighty works for your kingdom while our time remains here on earth. We thank you, God. We give you praise. All glory be to you. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church says amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Anthony. I appreciate that so much. I know the people will. And um, and, and if you would, you mentioned you're going on a broadcast there this yes. coming Sunday. If you want to speak about where you're going to be at, where people can kind of maybe follow a little bit further, especially if they're making that rededication or you know, accepting Christ, they would be able to get a little bit of more follow-up mm -hmm. uh, information. So be feel, feel free to go ahead and share where you're going next. Yeah, this Sunday night, uh, I'll be on Christina's channel. And uh, you'll probably, the links are in my descriptions below, or I can just send it to you so you can add it to the video. That'd be here. fine. We'll just add uh, it to here then. It's kind of a funky spelling. <laughs> but uh, it's, Christina Ch uh, it's Christina's channel. She's one of my moderators uh, over on uh, my channel. And she also is a moderator on some other channels as well. And she does a really great job. And so uh, I've been over there before. But, yeah, we're going to be over there this Sunday at 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, uh, uh, 8 o'clock Central, 7 Mountain. 
uh, so on and so forth. And so uh, that's what we're going to be discussing tonight is how to be now not just physically prepared for the things that we've discussed tonight, but also how to be spiritually prepared, which is really the most important thing. And so we're going to be getting into that and talking about, you know, uh, the bride of Christ and what that's going to look like, uh, you know, having to keep our our lamps full of oil during this time, you know, uh, all, a lot of the metaphoric and symbolisms that go into that. So uh, it's going to be a good broadcast. She's going to be interviewing me uh, during this period. And so, yeah, we'll, uh, uh, you know, we'll put that link uh, or I'll send you that link. So it can be in the video, but yeah, if you're interested in, in taking that knowledge a little bit further, it should be a great broadcast. It'll be about an hour long. Uh, I think, I mean, she may go two hours. I have no idea. It'll be up to her, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Amen. Perfectly. All right. Listen, those of you who've been listening, uh, really, we appreciate you. Uh, ju jump over there. Be sure to subscribe to uh, uh, Pastor Anthony's uh, broadcast. Uh, you, you won't regret it. I promise you. I always enjoy it. And uh, and then also, too, YouTube is on their attack when it comes to trying to keep me from. It's just like we just spin in a circle. We're at, mm -hmm. what, 396,000. And I don't normally say it, but I just like to punch back every once in a while. So resubscribe if that's what it takes. Um, I, I really would just like to get over that hump and 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 get out of that 396,000. I think we're 401 viewers and it just stays there every day. But the thing is, we know the people come on board. It's just mm -hmm. they don't want you to know they're coming in there for like a year. Yeah, you it's almost number exactly. for a year. And because when they finally let the, when they finally, when you can get past that and you can punch past it, we normally grow a thousand people a week. Easy. Uh -huh. That's how rapid we, we, we normally grow. So, but, uh, but maybe you guys could take and we can, we can kind of irritate YouTube and, 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 and cause it to happen regardless, even if they don't like it. So, all right. We love you guys. Thank you for listening and, uh, and God bless you. And I will talk to y'all tomorrow night.